Hello summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Trey and in today's video we'll be ranking the champs in each role by difficulty. We'll split up the champs in each role into five categories. Easy, medium, hard, super hard, and at the top we have the champs where pro level skill is required to play them. We'll also talk a bit about why some champs got placed where they did for context. Generally speaking, a champ's placement on this tier list is based on both their skill floor and ceilings. I'm sure there will be a lot of differing opinions on some of these, so please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Just try to be a bit nice about it. Also, if you like what you see in this video, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. You can see what we have to offer for free, and if you're serious about leveling up your game, you can become a pro member for just $7.99 a month. We already offer a ton of perks that we'll talk about towards the end of the video, but to sweeten the deal, we decided that we'll be doing RP giveaways for subs as well. Every patch, we're offering up a pretty hefty 11,525 RP. Entering takes just three quick steps. Click the link in the description, sign up for a pro membership, and comment your username down in the comments section. All right, let's get on to this difficulty tier list. We'll start things off in the top lane. There are definitely some champs that take a lot of precision in this lane, but then there are these guys. For the most part, trading with any of these champs is pretty simple. You right click, maybe press a button, and if you're stronger than your opponent, you win. They are also pretty intuitive to use post lane phase, so once you have a lead, it's pretty clear how to use it to win the game. In the medium category, most of the champs are just a bit more mechanically intensive. Take Darius for example. Most people think you can just mindlessly run at opponents and kill them, but that's only true when people disrespect you. Against someone that knows how to play against them, you may have to work a bit to get those sweet spot cues to hit. There are also champs in this category that may seem too easy to belong, like Nasus and Shen. True, both of them are mechanically super simple, but they require other skills to pull off. Shen easily beats up most other lanes with little effort, but to really utilize him well, you need to be really aware of what's happening elsewhere on the map to make use of his ult. With Nasus, you need to be a master of early game wave management. If you mess it up, you'll wreck your early game, and once behind, it can be impossible to catch back up and reach the point where you can carry in the mid game. The champs in the hard tier all sort of make it for different reasons. For example, Vayne and Kennen are both very hated champs in high elo, but in the lower ranks, they actually do bad a lot more often than they do well. They're a lot easier to punish than the ranged top laners up in the medium tier. In the mid lane, if you play Vlad, you're usually really safe to free farm and can pretty much always scale up, but in the top lane, most champs can bully you hard and zone you from CS early and make it impossible to actually reach the point where you come online. Gragas, on the other hand, bullies lane incredibly well easily neutralizing almost anyone. But he's still considered hard to play overall because of how much team play you need to be useful later on. That's why he only really does well in super high elo and pro play. The champs in the super hard tier are, as expected, ones that you need great mechanics to play. Even playing them at a mediocre level usually means that you're probably not being very useful. And for our pro level picks, we have champs that even playing good isn't enough. You need to have S tier ratings in your awareness, lane skill, and mechanics to even begin to be useful with them. That said, in basically any meta, anyone who has mastered one of these champs can hard carry games. Now let's take a look at the jungle. Unsurprisingly, a lot of the best junglers in the game are also the easiest ones. Champs like Fiddlesticks, Udyr, and Warwick are really, really hard to mess up, and with how strong their kits are, that results in you having a huge impact almost any time you lock them in. On top of being easy to play, everything in this tier is really hard for enemy junglers to punish. These picks pretty much all have fast, healthy clears and are able to avoid dying to invades. For the medium tier, you have to start using your brain just a little bit more. A lot of people may have an issue with Master Yi being placed here. He's basically the face of low elo carry junglers, right? Well, the thing is, Yi is a bit more technical than you may realize. On top of needing solid pathing to get past his meh early game, there are little mechanical things you can do with him, such as using Meditate perfectly to mitigate big damage or reset your auto attack, and using his Q to dodge important threats. A lot of other champs here, like Lilia and Evelyn, are overall really easy to play mechanically, but you need to have a good grasp on how to actually get into fights and do damage effectively. Placing Karthus here was a tough decision actually. Early on, landing every Q is a necessity to actually do damage in fights. But once you start scaling, it's basically an afterthought. If you make it to 30 minutes, walking in to die, and just hitting the enemy team with your E and alt is enough to do half their HP. Now for our hard champs. AP Shaco would probably be placed in medium tier on its own, but since AD is sort of the intended way to play him, we're putting him in this tier for the same reasons as Elise and Rek'Sai. To successfully pull any of them off, you need to play at a ridiculously high tempo, spam ganking and snowballing out of control to close the game out fast. Diego himself is a really easy champ to play, but obviously his passive complicates things. 
You need to know how to play whatever champ you're taking over, and think about the right order to combo their spells, and then when to leave their body behind. You also have to think about how tanky you're going to be, or won't be. I've seen so many Fed Viegos suddenly hand over a 1000 gold shutdown because they just can't stop themselves from taking over some super squishy carry in the middle of a team fight. The super hard tier champs all have tons of carrying potential, but if you end up being behind are completely useless. You really need a good understanding of how they work to get anything done. Kindred in particular takes a lot of brain power. Even if you manage to get fed, if you're not also getting your stacks on your passive, she's really weak since that extra range is 100% needed to safely pump out damage in fights. And then, due to their prevalence in pro play throughout the years, both Nidalee and Lee Sin are perpetually in a balance state that's so bad, you need insane mechanics to do anything with them. And even then, they're pretty hard capped on how much they can do. Now, for the mid lane. Compared to the other roles, the easy tier mid lane champs are probably by far the easiest to just pick up and play. Yes, even easier than the easy supports. Take Aureli on Soul, for example. He pretty much plays himself. You're just there for the ride. You survive the first two levels, go back for either Catalyst or Lost Chapter, then clear waves until it's time to teamfight. As the game drags on, your chances of winning skyrocket with this impossible to punish, infinitely scaling behemoth of a carry. The more aggro picks here are just as easy as the AFK farming ones. You would have to try pretty hard to lose a trade as Pantheon or Rumble. Moving up to the next level, we have some champs that take a bit more effort. Talia definitely isn't the hardest champ, but if you can't reliably land her WE combo, you're not going to be doing much damage in fights. In terms of just surviving and stalling out games, Ziggs is as easy as it gets. But we do need to also consider how hard it is to dish out damage too. Just wave clearing isn't enough to be considered impactful in games after all. It's simple enough to use his E to set up zone control in fights, but consistently landing Qs while staying safe in fights can be a bit tricky. The most controversial pick in our hard tier is probably going to be Katarina. Yes, we've all been absolutely destroyed by Kat at least a few times, and I'm sure it can be hard to understand what you even died to, so you automatically just think she's a face roll champ. But team fighting with Kat, especially when not fed, takes some pretty impressive mechanics and reaction speed. Another pick people are probably going to hate seeing is Yasuo being placed on the super hard tier list. Again, Again, it definitely feels awful when a fed Yasuo kills you with absolutely no counterplay on your end, but reaching that point isn't easy. I mean, just think about how many Yasuos you've had in the lane phase on your team, and then the game's over before they even finish their first item. You actually have to have pretty good mechanics with him to even go even in the lane phase, much less win it. You probably also notice that Jace is one tier easier in this role than he is top lane, and that's because the mid lane is a lot safer for him, both thanks to the length of the lane itself and the matchups you typically run into here. As with the top lane pro level picks, if you're not playing these mid laners to 100% capacity, they're basically cannon minions. That said, if you can pull out their full potential, you can completely take over games. With Irelia, you can pretty much do that entirely with your own mechanics, but the thing that makes LeBlanc so hard to pull off is that you really need a jungler that can work with you early to secure a lead. Now, let's move things down to the bot lane. Every mage that gets played as a carry bot lane easily goes into the easy tier. Playing any of them against a traditional marksman feels like you're playing League on easy mode. You auto win lane with their superior wave clear and poke. Seeing Jin in the same tier as those mages may be a bit of a surprise to some of you. Yeah, he does have some skill shots to land, but I think that is heavily counterweighted by one factor. Orb walking is one of the most mechanical things you can do as an AD carry. You have to move in between every auto attack, and with more attack speed, that gets increasingly difficult to do. But with his very low fixed attack speed, it's super easy to kite and chase foes between your autos as Jin. The champ I think I need to explain the most in the medium tier is Caitlyn. If every game was over at 15 minutes, she definitely wouldn't be here. There's no doubt that Kate is one of the easiest champs to completely dominate the early game with. I mean, how can you not destroy lane with 650 auto range? But still, even when she's considered super OP, her win rate is never really that high. We just had a so-called Caitlyn meta not that long ago where she was hovering between 50 and 51% win rate. That's because people just really don't know how to use her post lane phase very well. You need to really abuse that early lead to take over the map. With other champs, that just means going and forcing fights wherever you can. But with Kate, you need a more calculated approach, rotating to the other lanes and knocking down the towers there and then using her traps as zone control to take dragons. Now for the hard tier. Since he hard counters every traditional ADC, and lane phase isn't nearly as dicey as it is mid, we consider Yasuo one tier easier when played in the bot lane. While Kog'Maw's kit itself isn't too hard to use, he's the most vulnerable of any of the hyper carries. Twitch has his stealth, and Jinx has some sort of pseudo mobility thanks to the movement speed from getting excited. But with Kog, all you have is your ability to position well and to orb walk. Late game, you'll usually be at or even over the attack speed cap thanks to lethal tempo, so you need to have really, really good mechanics and fast hands to effectively pull this off. Due to their presence in pro play, 
both our super hard and pro level ADCs have been nerfed to the point that you have to put in a ton of effort to get any results. Callista can be a deadly laner, but she's super reliant on having an aggressive support that can facilitate her. You can snowball fast if you do get a lead, but if you throw that lead, the game is as good as lost. It shouldn't surprise anyone to see Aphelios in the highest tier. He's probably the best example of a champ that gets gutted due to their presence in pro play, no matter how bad they're already doing in solo queue. Even with nearly perfect play, it can be hard to put up good results with Aphelios. Other hyper carries do a lot more with like 20% of the effort. Rounding things out, we have our supports. It may be a bit surprising to non-support players that the easy tier isn't just a list of every enchanter in the game. It's true that it's super easy to just be completely carried when playing them, but this list is assuming you're actually trying to contribute to your ADC success. That's why there's so many mage supports here. Zyra, Brand, and Heimer are easily the most lane dominant supports in the game. Even if you can't land a skill shot, you'll be able to hard shove the lane and poke enemies out risk-free. The medium skill supports generally have pretty low skill floors, but you can definitely tell the difference between an average player and a great one. Take Lux, for example. A bad or mad Lux is one that just spams E to poke the enemy laners, and that's the end of things. But a great Lux is one that also utilizes her passive in trades and looks for snares when the opportunity is there, allowing the ADC to follow up for a really nice trade. Herrick definitely has an interesting mastery curve. If you've never played him before, you're probably going to be the worst support in the world the first time you pick him. But once you get a few reps in and understand that the key is basically just to never stop autoing so you can keep resetting your spells, he's very easy to get the hang of. Compared to other roles, the champs in our hard tier for support aren't really all that hard. It's more just about positioning well and being in the right place at the right time to use their kits. Look at Twitch, for example. There's nothing hard about right-clicking and pressing E. The hard part is juggling ganking other lanes and not completely leaving your ADC out to dry bot lane, all while making sure that you don't fall behind in XP so much that you become irrelevant. Bard is a completely unique champ. While our super hard tiers for other roles were mostly champs with very hard to master mechanics, Bard's difficulty comes from how creative you have to be with them. You have to be super active on the map to get good results with them constantly looking to roam and gank other lanes, or shepherd your jungler in for a gank on your lane with a good portal. And by far, the hardest thing to do with him right is use that ult. A good one can deny a referral charge, set up a dive, or save your team from certain death, while a bad one can throw the entire game. Of course, the hardest support in the game is going to be Thresh. Both his skill floor and ceiling are way, way above any other champ in this role. The thing is, Thresh almost has too much going on. He can peel, he can protect, he can lantern immobile carries out of otherwise unsavable situations, he can make picks, he can even dive. You need S tier decision making and awareness to decide what the best course of action is in every fight, and equally good mechanics to pull it off. And that about wraps things up for our champion difficulty tier list. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you want to see more from us, head on over to ProGuides.com. We have tons of other content and courses by pros like CoreJJ, Double Left, and General Sniper for you to access, and now we're even working on pushing out guides for every champ. All of that for just $7.99 a month. And that's not all. If you prefer a more one-on-one -on -one approach, our team of coaches are the best you'll find anywhere on the market. And with a pro guide sub, you'll even get discounted rates with them. Trust me, the amount of time you save by booking a session with them is so, so worth it. You'll accelerate your climb by months once you apply everything they have to teach you. And of course, there's that sweet, sweet RP giveaway. Again, the link for the site is down in the description box below. Anyways, thanks so much for watching the video. Do remember to let me know your thoughts on this list down in the comments. But let's be civil, please. Lists like this are a mix of objective and subjective analysis, so there are definitely going to be some different thoughts and even some mistakes on my end. I can't wait to see you guys next time, but until then, good luck on the rift. Bye-bye!